Course 3, Lesson 91, we are looking at the effect of scaling on perimeter area and volume. So if we take a figure and scale it up or down, we can see that the surface or the uh, scale factor changes between perimeter area and volume. So let's look at what we mean by that. If we have a square that starts one by one, and we scale it up to be a square that's two by two. Well, we want to know how did we get from this perimeter of one to this perimeter of two? Oops, sorry. Well, we would say, okay, well, to get there, I would have to multiply by two. And so that is actually our scale factor. We're saying I have a ratio of the areas of two to one, so my scale factor is two. So if we start uh, saying, okay, well then what's the scale factor for the areas? And you may think, okay, well it should be the same, it should be two, but when we look at the areas, we say the area of this one is one, whereas the area of the second one is four, two by two. Which we can see if we go from area to area, that ratio is four over one, or we multiply by four. Which means we actually take my scale factor and square it to get four. Similarly, if we are talking about volumes, a one by one by one cube to a two by two by two cube, well, the scale factor of the perimeters is one, or scale factor of the perimeters, we have to multiply by two. The surface areas of that, we would multiply by four. The volumes would be the scale factor two cubed which is eight. Because if I figure out the volume of this little guy is one, one by one by one, but the volume of my other one, my new one, is eight. That means that I, I scaled it up eight times. Okay, so when we're thinking about our scale factor, scale factor of the perimeters is just the ratio. Scale factor for the areas is that scale factor squared. And the ratio of the volumes is our original scale factor of two cubed. So let's try this on a couple examples. Sally was asked to paint a mural. The mural was to be 10 times the length and the width of her original canvas, meaning maybe she started out with a square like this and it became a really big one like this. And let's just make it easy on ourselves. Maybe it was one foot by one foot. That means that her new canvas, if we have the length and the width being 10 times, that would mean that the side length would be 10 feet, this would be 10 feet. So let's say, all right, the ratio of the perimeters is 10 over one, so the scale factor, the perimeter scale factor is 10. Going on with the question, it says, she bought 10 times as much paint, kind of makes sense, as she used on her canvas for her mural, but she ran out of paint, why? How much does she actually need? Well, if we're thinking about painting, all right, painting a wall or something like that, or painting a mural in this case, we're talking about area of something. And if we start with our area of one in our first case, the area of our larger one, 10 by 10, is 100, meaning that I went from one to 100. That's a scale factor of 100. So my area scale factor, remember, is my scale factor squared, which is 10 squared, or 100. Meaning, if she only bought 10 times as much paint, she was off by a lot. We actually need 100 times as much paint as our original one. Think about this. If she needed one can of paint for her original canvas, then she would need 100 cans of paint for her new canvas. Meaning, if she only bought 10 times, she would need 90 more cans of paint to actually finish her canvas. She missed by a lot. Next one, Irene is making a replica of her stained glass window. She wants to make the replica a third of the size of the actual window. The original window is made of 3,456 square inches of glass and a perimeter of 240. How much glass will she need? What is the perimeter? Okay, so basically we're saying we have this big stained glass and we are gonna make a model that is a third of the size. And our perimeter of the original is 240 inches. Awesome. 
Well, let's start there and figure out what is the perimeter of my new one? Well, she said that she wants to make the replica a third of the size of the actual window, meaning that my perimeter is going to be a third of the size. So my perimeter skill factor is one third. Meaning if I take my original perimeter, I need a third of it to get my new perimeter, my small perimeter. So I would take 240, divide it by three, and I would see that, oh, that means that I have 80 inches as my new perimeter. But to actually figure out how much of uh, the glass that we need, we start out with an area of 3,456 square inches. But as we know from what we've been doing, my area scale factor is not quite the same. I actually use my scale factor and I square it, meaning my area is going to be one ninth of the size for my replica. So I would take my 3,456 and divide by 9. Well, if I do that 9 into 34, that means, okay, I can get 3 in there, so I have 27. That looks like I have, well, 4 and 3, 7 left. 75, so 9 into 75, that looks like it's 8. Okay, 8 times 9, 72. All right, 3. Okay, we bring it all the way down, 6, meaning 9 into 36 is 4. So my new area is 384 square inches. All right, we use that scale factor to say I need a ninth of the area. Instead of just a third, like the perimeter did, I have to square that, and I only take a ninth of it. If you can imagine, okay, if I want to break this into thirds, I would have a third of the perimeter and I only want a ninth of the area. Okay, split it into three, I only want a third of it. The area, I just want one ninth of it, which means I would have 384 square inches. All right, one more question. Nelson built a figure with four one inch cubes. How many one inch cubes will be needed to build a similar figure with the dimensions doubled? Meaning instead of just having one cube, um, I need two cubes in the place where I see one. Same figure shape, but I need it a little bit different. So if we're talking about one inch cubes, I am talking about volume, meaning I have a volume right now of four inches cubed. I have four one inch cubes, so I have four inches cubed. Well, if we are doubling the side lengths, that means that the ratio of my perimeters is a 2 because I'm doubling it times 2, which means just like we've been doing, I'm going to square that to get my surface area for uh, scale factor, and I'm going to cube it to get my volume scale factor, meaning that I can take my original volume of 4 inches cubed, and if I'm on my new volume, I'm going to have to do that original 4 times my scale factor of 8. I'm going to need 32 of these cubes to make a shape that's similar if I just want the side lengths doubled. And what this looks like is this, okay? I have all of my side lengths. Instead of just one, I have two all the way around, which means I need 32 of them in here, okay? So here are some extra ones that you can practice on, okay? These are... Um, good ones to try out. If the dimensions of a wall si wallet size photo are about half the dimensions of a 5x7, the area of the wallet size photo is about what fraction of the area? Well, if the dimensions are half, that means the perimeter scale factor is one half, which means the area scale factor, we're going to square it and get one fourth. The area is going to be about one fourth of what we had. All right, the next one, all right, try it on your own before you see what I um, do on here. Okay, but a triangle with the vertices of 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 2 is dilated by a scale factor of 4. Sorry, I'm just redrawing what I had. 
the area of the dilation image is about how many times the area of the original. Well, if it's dilated by a scale factor of 4, we're talking about that perimeter scale factor again. So the perimeter scale factor is 4, meaning my area scale factor, I'm going to square it and get 16. The area is going to be 16 times as big. Find the scale factor from the smaller rectangle to the larger rectangle. Find the ratios of the perimeters and areas of the larger rectangle to the smaller rectangle. So first let's find the perimeter of our small one. If it's 4 by 2 by 4 by 2, <coughs> that means that I am going to have a perimeter of, let's see, 4 and 4 is 8, plus 2, 10, 12. I have a perimeter of 12. Okay. And then I'm going to look at this larger rectangle. Looks like I have um, 6 on this side length, and does it tell me the side length of the other one? It should. Let me look in my book and see if it just didn't show up on this example. All right, try it out for yourself if you are um, with me. Let's see. So in the book, when we look at it, it looks like it has a side length of, well, it doesn't actually say, which is kind of funny, but when we look um, in the book, it looks like the four inches, we have two more of them. So I believe the side length is 12. Okay, which would make sense because this scale is 2 to 4, so 6 to 12 would be a similar triangle, which makes sense. Okay, so if the perimeter of my original one is 12, the larger one perimeter is 12 and 12, 24 and 6, 30, 36. Okay, which looks like the perimeters are multiplied by 3. Okay, so if the perimeters are multiplied by 3, then the areas, area scale factor, would be 9. Okay, which makes sense because this 4 times 2 would be 8. 12 times 6 is 72. 8 times 9 gives me 72, so that does work. Okay, last one. Find the surface area and volume of a 1-inch cube and a 10-inch cube. What is the ratio of surface areas? What's the ratio of volumes? Well, I don't even have to, I could find the surface areas and the volumes and practice, but I know that it goes up. My perimeter scale factor is 10 because I went from 1 inch to 10 inches on each side, which means that the area surface um, scale factor is the same as the surface area scale factor, which would be 10 squared or 100. And the volume scale factor would be 10 cubed which is 1,000, okay? So those would be the ratio of the surface areas and the volumes. To talk about um, some percentages here, let's just talk about really quick, if we went from a one by one square to a three by three square, then if I'm talking about perimeter scale factor, that means that I have perimeter scale factor of three. I have an area scale factor and a surface area scale factor of 9 and a volume scale factor of 27. Well, let's talk about some um, percentages. I'm sorry about all the lines. Can't quite figure out why it's doing that and can't change it right now. But if we're talking about the perim perimeter scale factor, well, th if I have it at 3, that means that I have 300% of the original. Okay, 300% of the original. So, if I have 300% of the original, that means that I have 200% more. I start with 100%, I add 200% on, and I get my 300% of the original, which means that I have a 200% increase. Okay, and then I say, all right, if I have an area scale factor of 9, that means that I have 900% of the original, which means that I have a 800% 
increase. Okay, I always take my 900% of the original and I take away 100% because that's what I had. I had 100% I added on 800% to get to that 9. And if I have volume scale factor of 2700, that means 2700 of the original. 2700%, which is 2600% increase. Okay, on the flip side, on the flip side, if I go from a, let's say, a 3 by 3 to a 1 by 1, okay, I'm getting smaller. That means that my perimeter scale factor is one third. I have a third, which means that I have 33 and a third percent of the original. I decreased by 66 and two thirds percent. Okay, that's how much I decreased. I only have 33 and a third left, so I decreased by 66 and two thirds percent. Area scale factor, well, I have one ninth, which actually means I have 11.1 repeating percent of the original. So I decreased, I decreased um, 88 point, oh, this is, it gets really funny, right? Because of all of those decimals, we need it to add up to 100. So um, I do 88 point, nine repeating percent, I believe. Okay, and then for my volume scale factor, I have 1 27th, okay, as a, um, as a percentage, let's see, 1 27th, I could divide 1 divided by 27, and I would get 3.7 percent of the original, which, a de which is a decrease of 96.3 percent, okay. So I always, always look at, okay, how much do I have left? And I uh, then I have taken away that much, all right? Just like a discount at a store, okay? So let me just make sure that my, um, the one before is correct. All right, and we would say, um, yeah, 88.8 .8 repeating percent. It's kind of a funny one, but anyways, I hope this was helpful for your homework and for studying.